Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the default presets project. So I'm just going to unzip this and you can see we've got a default folder in here which we're going to need later. But for now we can just double click the Ableton Live set and that's going to open it up in Ableton. So now that this is opened up, what we have within this project is we have the master channel settings, we've got the reference track, we've got our sidechain trigger track and we've got all of our audio devices and MIDI devices. And then we can also go Command Shift and T for our MIDI track defaults and our audio track defaults as well. And then further to that, we've also got some defaults for sample dropping as well. If you get stuck with anything, we've got this little help panel here and you can flick through these pages or you can use the index pages and it will tell you everything you need to know. So I'll just show you if we go to audio devices, you can see you can jump to whatever section you need to go to here. So I'll close that for now. So to show you the template in action, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the arrangement view and we're going to open up the browser and we're going to drag a clip in which is going to act as our project audio. So this is going to go through our master bus. So I'm just going to drag out this drum and bass clip and then we're going to loop that up. And then what we're also going to do is I'm just going to tab through my browser and I'm just going to bring in some reference material. So I'll go for this master track here. So now we've got our reference in place and we've also got our project audio in the form of this drum and bass track. So I'm just going to play some of that. And this is just working exactly as expected. So the first thing I want to show you is our master channel. So we've set up a few little keyboard shortcuts on here, only two um, for the whole project. And these are the capital M key. And that's going to take us from stereo to mono. And it's just going to toggle that on and off. So when we're referencing, we can just see how our track sounds in mono. And then we can just press caps to take it back off. So I'll just show you that now. So that's our first key mapping and the second one allows us to toggle between our master track and our reference track using these mute switches here, which is the caps lock left bracket key. So if we go to our reference, you can see we've got another mute switch and it just toggles on and off. And we've set this to external out. And what this means is that we're not over processing our reference track by sending it back through the master. So it's a much more true form of the reference track. So it keeps it nice and unbiased. If you don't like using these key mappings, of course, you can go in and you can map them to a MIDI controller instead. So I'll just show you this working now. So that's a little bit loud, so I'm just going to go into the gain and pull that down slightly so we can set and forget our reference track. And what this allows us now to do is instantly reference our master against our reference track. It's perfectly in time and we can also gain match it as well. So just so we can hear the timing there. And of course this is completely free and if we had this with a plugin we'd probably have to pay for it. So now moving on to our audio and MIDI tracks, if you look at our audio track, it's automatically set to minus six decibels when we create a new one. And this is just to help us maintain proper gain staging and it also has an EQ8 placed on it because nearly every track is going to end up getting some EQ. With our MIDI tracks, you can see we've got the scale device on but bypassed. And this is set to the minor scale because it's the most common scale for electronic dance music. And when you use this, just don't forget that when you turn the device on, you've still got to set the root note or the bass to the key of your track. So these are the track defaults. So every time we load up a MIDI or audio track, we're going to get these settings every time. So now we go to our side chain. As you can see, we've got our MIDI notes running all the way through on every quarter note, which is where the kick would be. We've got our hi-hat sample here, nice and tight at 100 milliseconds. So what we can do is if we just drop a compressor onto our drum and bass audio, it's nice and easy for us to now sidechain. All we've got to do is open up the sidechain panel and select the sidechain trigger. And what we can also do is we go to the sidechain's delay and we can delay this track in the forward or back. And this is basically like adding a look ahead on a compressor and it allows our sidechain to react either slightly ahead or behind the beat so we can let things like kick transients through. The next thing I want to show you is the sample dropping default. So if we go to our MIDI track and we drop a sample onto this, then it's going to instantly load up the sampler device. So I'll just show you that. And if you don't want to use the sampler device, then you can change that in the settings in the defaults to a simpler device. So I'm going to get rid of that now. And we can also do the same thing, but for a drum rack. So if we load up a drum rack and we drop something onto one of these pads, then this time we're going to get the simpler device instead. And what we've done is we've pre-mapped some macro controls. So you've got nice control over the attack, decay, and things such as the pitch as well. And what we've also done is we've mapped some other functions as well, like the tone and compression. So I'll show you the glue compressor first. So as you can see, we can control the glue. And if I just minimize this glue compressor, we can also push the tone either brighter or darker as well. So now that I've shown you all of this, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these tracks. And the final thing I want to show you is our audio and MIDI devices, which I've left on this track here. 
So the reason I've left this track is so we can right click these devices and set save as default preset. I'm not going to go into why we've set these devices as we have because you can find that in the lesson panels when you open up this project. So what we're going to do first before we go and set the devices as default is we're going to go and set the project as default. So we go to file preferences, go to the file folder and we can select save the current set as default and it's going to set this exactly as we see it now as default. So it's going to have our reference track, it's going to have our side chain, and it's even going to have this extra devices track. So I suggest when you do this, you get rid of the devices track first, because we are going to use a different method to set all of these devices down here on the bottom as our default devices for the next time we open up our own new project. So just to show you what I'm on about, in this project, these EQ bands have been set in a user-friendly way. And if we go to the compressor, it's going to go straight into the activity view, because that's been set as default for this project but we want that to be default for all of our projects so what we can do is we can right click and we can select save as default preset and that's going to overwrite the previous one and that's now the default preset for every single one of our Ableton projects from now on so instead of doing that for every single one of these there is a slightly better way of doing that which I'm now going to show you so first things first we're going to get rid of anything we don't need so we'll get rid of our devices we'll set our loop brace get rid of our master because we don't want that to be on every single one of our new projects and I'm just going to go and save this again as our default project so there's no things that we don't want on this project anymore whatsoever so save as default okay now we've done that so what we can now do is we can go to our user library and we can navigate to the defaults folder and that's where all of our defaults are set for any project that we open so user library and here we have the defaults and if we open these at the moment We've got no defaults in there and we want to fill these with our own default presets. And what I've done is I've included a file, a new defaults file with this download. So to do this, all we've got to do is we've got to right click this default folder and we want to select show in finder. And that's going to show us where our user library is in the finder window. So just right click this. And this is our defaults folder. So just to clarify, whenever you save a preset as default, it goes into this user library defaults folder and it overwrites the previous setting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the pack that you downloaded. We'll just navigate to the project and in this project I've included a defaults folder. And all we're going to do with this defaults folder is we're going to use this and we're going to overwrite the user library defaults. So this is exactly the same as if we went to every single instrument and right clicked it and set save as default. But doing it this way ensures that we make sure we get every single default for things such as the dropping samples, the MIDI effects, the audio effects and the tracks as well. So now to do this, all we've got to do is drag this across whilst holding Alt, drop it in and then replace. And that's now replaced all of our defaults. And just to check that's worked, we'll go to the defaults folder. And we'll just have a look in the audio effects and we should see this now full, which we do. And the last thing I want to do is just right click and we're going to go to create a new folder in the defaults folder. We're going to call it templates. And what you can do is you can save this project into the templates folder. So you've got it whenever you need to revert back to it. And then you can also go and save your own custom ones in there. So you could have separate templates for things such as techno, tech house, EDM or hip hop. So I've shown you a few different ways that we can set our device defaults as well as our default project template. So now we're going to test our theory. We're not going to save this. We're going to get rid of everything. So we're going to delete all of these files and we're going to open up a completely new Ableton Live set and it should open up with the device defaults and the default project template that we saved earlier. So we'll open this up and as you can see it's got our reference track and there's no reference material in it which is good because we don't want anything in there. Uh, we've got our sidechain set up, we've got our master set up with the keyboard mappings as well. We can test our audio devices. We should get activity view on this compressor, which we do. We should get our EQ bands on EQ8. If we create a new audio track, it should have an EQ on it. And if we create a new MIDI track, it should have the scale device on it. And then we can also check our sample dropping and we should get a sampler, which we do. And if we delete this and we try that with a drum rack, we should get a simpler with macro control set up. If you need any more help with this pack, then check out the lessons that open up when you open the pack. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos and free content. Thanks very much.